I'm super excited to have this next guest back on the show. This is one of my favorite fighters from the state of Michigan where I grew up. They say you can take the boy out of Michigan, but you can't take Michigan out of the boy. So even though I'm not there, I'm cheering for him. This Michigander also is no longer training in Michigan, but I know he's Michigan all the way. And uh, we're super happy to have this man. He is a UFC bantamweight contender uh, with an amazing big fight coming up. And we're talking about the man they call the Spartan, Cody Stamen. Welcome back to the show, Cody. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So you are in Las Vegas, and you've been training there mostly, I think, for a year or so. Is it exclusively, or do you sometimes get back and train with your team? I think you were Michigan top team back in Michigan, right? Yeah, I actually I got back uh, for a little over a week, uh, this training camp, just during the holidays. Uh, it was good to go home and see everyone and, uh, you know, kind of get back to my roots. Uh, it, was, it was really nice, but I have been – training mainly in uh in las vegas sounds good and i know you're you're doing training with like extreme couture as well as like another team or something or i think they kind of mix it up there with what syndicate and extreme couture or or who 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 are you with and uh, who's been helping you for yeah. this camp so i mean i train uh with casey halstead uh at 10th planet and henderson mm -hmm. uh and i also go to extreme couture for a few practices um i kind of bounce around you know I just it's wherever the best competition where the best practices I think are for me. Uh, and then, you know, I do a lot of stuff at the PI as well. I do all my strength conditioning there. I usually meet my coaches at the PI. Um, you know, there's just so many resources in Las Vegas. There's so many, uh, good training partners and, and, and good gyms. Just, it's just a good atmosphere. You know what I mean? Everybody's kind of out for the same thing. And, uh, you know, these guys work hard out here and they do it full time and it's good to be around people that are doing that. Very cool. Very good to hear. Let me ask my producer something here real quick, Cody. Adam, I'm hearing him super loud in my ear. We, we had an upgrade in sound, Cody, so I didn't have to talk as loud as I used to, but I'm hearing you mm -hmm. super loud in my ear. I'm going to see if my producer can adjust that. Uh, and he is looking to do that. And okay. So maybe not quite. Okay. That, okay, perfect. I think that should be better. It. Yep, that is great. Perfect. All right, thank you, Adam. Thank you, Cody. All right, Cody, so uh, cool. I, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate your patience there. Always got to try to make things as good as they can, and uh, and that's there. Okay, so this is an interesting matchup. You were going to go up against uh, Marab Dvalish Willy, and uh, mm -hmm. that fight fell out, and now you got Andre Ewell, a fighter who couldn't be as any more different than Marab uh, Dwalish Willie. Um, the only difference I think is that he's obviously not as an, not as accomplished or I don't think quite as high as highly rated as Marab. But uh, what, what was your thought, man? If I can ask when, when they, when they called you up and said, uh, said, Cody, we're still on, but uh, no Marab, you got Andre Ewell. Can I ask what your first thought was? So there's, there's a, there's a time period, right? They did, like it was announced that Marab uh, wasn't going to fight, and I knew something was was strange because I'd signed the contract and assumed I was fighting Marab, but nothing had been announced. And normally, uh, I sign the contract, and it's like the next day it's announced. All the the media gets a hold of it, and it's announced everywhere, and I can announce it, and uh, that's normally how it would work. But this time, it hadn't been announced for like three weeks, and finally, I I messaged my manager i'm like hey you know i'd really like to start promoting this fight you know what's what's going on he's like okay you know let me let me uh let me double check and make sure that's okay with the ufc and then um he said yeah we're good to go and then i guess it, it comes back that marab uh has covid and he's mm. not gonna fight mm. um ironically enough though i mean we were supposed to fight in december i had a back injury and um, you know, Marab, Marab somehow heard that I had COVID and that I wasn't going to fight and, you know, said some negative things about me, like that I was just trying to get out of the fight. Mm. Um, and then it, the exact same thing happens to him and he doesn't fight. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it was a, it was a, one of those weird, weird things. And I'm like, well, you know, who, who do you think they can get me? You know, cause I still want to fight on that day. I've been preparing for that date. I've been working hard for a long time, you know, months and months and months. Uh, I already had a fight fall through in December, like I said, with Marab. He was like, I don't know. We'll wait and see. And I was like, listen, <clears throat> I'll say yes to anyone. I don't care who it is. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it is. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like, so just the first, the first person that agrees to fight, I'm going to do it. You know, I've been getting ready for too long. 
you know, I'm at a place, you know, mentally and physically where it doesn't really matter who I fight. And uh, Andre Ewell came up. And, you know, I think I'd watch him fight once or twice. Um, kind of knew who he was, but wasn't uh, wasn't exactly sure that was the guy. And then I remembered, I'm like, this is a tall southpaw boxer. And I was fighting a short orthodox wrestler. So very, very, very different. But luckily, you know, I, I've had plenty of time to kind of prepare and get that look um, that you need. But, I mean, the main thing for me is is, is – just being in good shape and being, you know, ready for anything because it doesn't really matter who you fight. I mean, really the, the, the competition is you, you know, that's, that's the, the true nature of this. You know, everybody's tough You know, everyone in the UFC is good. Everyone, you know, poses their own threats, you know, they're, they're good in different ways. Um, and it's just about, you know, collectively finding ways to beat people. And, you know, I had a really great game plan for Marab. Um, and I have just as good a game plan to beat under you. Absolutely, and we'll get into that right away. But first, I want to share uh, a fan question. He asks if you're from Michigan, if you're an ICP fan. Insane? Uh, no, no, I'm not. not you. Don't like the insane no, clown posse? No. They're a little bit before no, your that's... time, also, really, kind of, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. They are. Uh, it's not my speed, though. I'm uh, yeah, I'm more of a classic rock guy. I'm that's more of a classic cool. rock guy. That's cool. How about Kid Rock? He's another Michigan guy. You like Kid uh, Rock? I'm, I like Kid Rock. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I thought of I thought about you know walking out to a Kid Rock song just because you know Michigan guy, Michigan guy. Absolutely. Did you watch the fights today? Did you see? Do you know the song that Michael Chiesa walked out to? That was classic rock, but I forgot the name of it. Do you remember it? Did you watch that? No, I uh, I, I missed the walkout. I, I saw like one round. It was kind of right in the middle of my training today, so I actually didn't. I'm gonna go back and rewatch the fights uh, maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but no, I didn't. I didn't see. But Mike Chiesa has got good taste, so I'm sure it was a it was a good song. Absolutely, he's a cool dude. It was a great fight. So Andre, you yeah. all, man, what a different what a different fighter. But like you said, you were able to get that look. I mean, you know, it's interesting because the first matchup obviously everyone could see what that would have been you and marab would have been like grappling you it would have been like two two uh pit bulls like going at each other you would have been looking for the takedown you would have been hitting i mean that would that probably could would have been like had fight of the night written all over it and been just just a, a just an absolute you know dog fight uh with this one you're the superior wrestler you're the more experienced guy uh and 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 basically not diminishing Andre Ewell, but I I believe this is definitely you know I mean I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw it out there I think uh, Andre Ewell is not gonna be as hard a fight for someone as Marab uh would have been but he's he's long and lanky I mean you know, I'll hear I'll tell you what I remember he fought a guy I think it was Nathaniel Wood from England and I don't think Wood has the wrestling that you have, but he, he has almost like a similar style, you know, that you have, right? He's not a he's not a really tall guy, but he's really physically strong, and he does have some wrestling. And he just, you know, I, I was in there per, in person to see that, and he just punished uh, Andre Ewell. And I'm just thinking that you're a better fighter than Nathaniel Wood. And so my feeling is, if MMA if MMA math was perfect, you know, then you you put a beating on Andre worse than Nathaniel Wood did. Although you never know, but I'm sure you have confidence in that fight, and uh, you know, um, it's just you know, it's going to be what it is. But have you had any uh, many official fights with guys like that, tall and lanky and skinny before? Yeah, actually, uh, I did. I had one. I had, I fought Tyrion Ware in my UFC debut. And a couple guys uh, before the UFC that had, like, literally, Terry Ware was 5'8", with a 74-inch reach. Wow. It's yeah. identical to Andre Ewell. So I, I have an idea of what it's like. Um, there's definitely a weird feeling out period, though, because that's a hard that's a hard thing to, to imitate someone with that long of arms. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, like, Andre Ewell, and he's a good boxer, you know. He, he hits hard. Um, definitely fighting a southpaw is... is drastically different than fighting someone that's orthodox yeah that's you know true. a lot of the things that a lot of things that you prepare for and, and you expect out of someone that's an orthodox fighter yeah completely different with a southpaw yeah but i you know i've i've fought southpaws in the past i mean i i know what i have to do you know it's just about you know in during from now until the fight and you know for the last two weeks since i've known um you know preparing for that that different look i mean i thought 
you know, going in, you know, fighting Marab. Nobody wants to fight Marab. No, you know, no, no one wanted to fight Marab. They couldn't find him a replacement. I bet they couldn't I find it. him a replacement on five weeks' notice. They couldn't find anyone that would fight him. Wow. Geez. I mean, that's how terrified people are of this guy, just because he takes he takes good wrestlers down multiple times in a fight. Yeah. Um, and he his pressure is 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 tremendous. I mean, the guy's tough. He's got absolutely no quitting him, and he's got a gas tank for, from hell. Yep. Um, and I've been preparing for that. And, you know, like, I wanted to test myself against Marab. You know, I really did I really did want that fight, and I was expecting that fight. And, you know, and everything in my heart told me that I was I was going to beat him. Like, I, you know what I mean? The, the, the preparation, um, you know, I knew how good a shape I had to be in. I yep. knew, you know, that I had to wrestle a lot, and I knew I had to be uh, – you know, ready for that pace and in getting ready for Marab, you know, I'm probably in the best shape of my life just because, uh, you know, my, my wrestling is the sharpest it's been maybe my entire career. I've never wrestled this much. Um, nice, you know, because I was just getting ready for that specific opponent. Um, and then, you know, that, that goes out the window and now I'm fighting Andre Yule. Um, honest to god i mean i know that for a fact if i wanted to set the usc takedown record against andre yule yeah i could do it yeah i mean like i know that i could take this guy down whenever i want you know what i mean and that's something that that is detrimental i mean a fight you know you see this all the time you see guys that are just great strikers great boxers you know they're they're fast they hit hard they can knock people out i mean connor versus khabib you know connor knocks everybody out you know khabib doesn't knock anybody out but he he is dominant in, a, in the grappling exchanges, you know? So anytime I'm going into a fight where I feel like I have a distinct advantage in the wrestling, I can decide where this fight ends up. If I want to fight on my feet, we'll fight on, we'll fight on my feet. If I decide I want to take this guy down, I can do this whenever I want. I mean, as soon as the opportunity comes up, you know, and the, I think about Andre Yule, like Andre Yule, ultimately his goal the entire fight is to keep me the hell away from, like yeah. he can't let me anywhere near him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because obviously, you know, he has a lot longer reach. But I mean, if you've watched fights, eventually you end up close. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, so for Andre Yule to win, he has to literally keep me at the end of his range the entire fight. He can't let me. As soon as I bridge that gap, it's over. Yeah. You know what I mean, as soon yeah. as I get, as soon as I get to his legs, as soon as, as soon as I get past his reach, you know what I mean, and I can hit him. Uh, you know, he's in trouble. And and the the way he fights, the way he jumps in with his shots, just it's bad news against somebody that can really wrestle because I've seen, like you said, guys that are a lot, you know, a lot worse wrestlers than me take him down. Yeah. Um, guys that don't, don't have good shots, you know, and, and I have one of the best shots in MMA. Um, I take everybody down. I mean, good wrestlers, college wrestlers. I, you know what I mean? Like I, I take down, you know, I took down the number one guy in the world four times in a round. Yep. So, I mean, if, if, if I decide to take somebody down, like I, I can do that. Yeah. Um, and you know that's i don't know i mean we'll see how the fight goes you know if uh if if i had my way i wouldn't use my takedowns you know what i mean it just so happens that in fights like my goal is always not to get hit not to take damage not to be you know what i mean i don't want to be one of those guys that's talking on the side of my mouth when i'm done fighting you know so i've always been a super technical fighter i've always i've always tried to avoid the damage as much as possible and you know what I mean? If I feel like at any moment Andre Ewell is, you know what I mean, doing well on his feet, I'm going to put him on his ass. That, that's just the reality of it. You know, I, you know, and I have that ability. That's something that I've been working on for, you know, 20 years. Absolutely. And uh, that's, uh, that's not, a good, not a good thing for uh, somebody like Andre. Very true. In his last fight against Erwin Rivera, I thought Rivera beat him. Did you watch that fight? Did you have that same opinion or, or did you not? Really uh, yeah, it was a, it was a close it was a close fight. Um, I thought Andre came out. He comes out hot, right? He comes out really really hot. He yep. comes out uh, in that first round. Um, he's real springy, real fast, good counters. Um, I thought he looked really really good in that fight in the first round, and then in the second round, you know, close, really close. Third round also really close. You know, that's a tough one to score. It depends on what you're looking at. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I felt like. Uh, he was definitely the busier, busier guy. You know, Andre Yule was definitely busier. He threw more punches for sure. Probably landed more punches, but uh, when he got hit, it was 
it was hurting. It was hurting. You know what I mean? It, yeah. Clearly, it was hurting him. It was knocking him back. You know, he's getting hit with hard shots. He got taken down uh, in both rounds, I believe. So, it depends on what you're looking at. You know, you never know what judges are are holding higher. You know what I mean? And that's one of the problems with the judging is you don't know. I mean, sitting on the couch, you have no idea what they're saying. They could be saying, seeing something totally different. They're, you know, sitting cage side. They might not get the right angle for or something that you would see clear as day. So, yeah, um, it's, just, it's, it's, it's strange. You, you, you never know. I mean, you really never know. Yeah. I did watch him fight. I watched him fight Jonathan Martinez and I definitely thought he lost that fight. And he yeah. ended up winning a split decision there. Yeah. So, I mean, you're talking about a guy that's winning split decisions against guys that aren't ranked. Yeah. And you know, I'm fighting the cream of the crop. I'm fighting the best guys in the yeah. world. I'm fighting, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm fighting Algernon Sterling. I'm fighting Jimmy Rivera. You yeah. Know, I'm fighting, uh, Brian Callagher. Like, yeah, you know my resume speaks for itself at this point. Like I've fought some of the best guys at bantamweight ever. You know, so mm-hmm. um, there's nothing that is going to happen in there that I, I haven't seen before. Absolutely. You know, have I fought someone that's a southpaw that's that long? No, but uh, but listen, I can handle my business. I know what I, I know. What I got to do. Yeah. You know, I know what my job is. Absolutely. And uh, like I said, all I got to do is bridge that gap one time. Yep. And it's over. You know, once it, once I. Once I break that distance one time, I mean, he's screwed. Without a doubt. Let me ask you this, Cody. In a situation like this, I could see some fighters going in there thinking, man, I don't even have to be, like, awake to beat this guy. And I could, you know, I mean, I know you're not the kind of guy that's going to go in uh, overconfident or not paying attention, but is is it a real thing that sometimes when you're pit, pit, matched up with a guy that, that you and everyone else really thinks you can you can win without too much of a problem, does that ever present a problem? And, and you know, and if, and if so, how do you avoid falling into that trap? Like, I, I've actually seen guys walk in and look like they're going, they're just making a face like, oh, please, you know, this guy's in front of me. And, you know, how do you avoid that? Or, or is that something that's never been a problem for you? How does your mindset work? Is it a little bit harder than if you were going against Marab and you're like, you know that you're in there with someone just as good as you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I approach every fight like it's it's the biggest fight of my life. I mean, because essentially, you know, every single fight is, it's, it's pivotal in your career, right? you know where where you're going to go next i mean so by no means have i done anything differently if anything i stepped on the pedal a little harder uh when i found out i was fighting andre yule because the changes that i needed to make you know what i mean and and i've been super focused on that uh there are a lot of times when i feel like guys do tend to take certain opponents lightly and it and this is this is mma there are so many ways to get beat you know what I mean? Like it is very, very hard to come out of this unscathed and you got to figure every single guy that made it to the UFC, like these guys can fight, like they can all fight. You know, there's not anyone in the UFC that doesn't deserve to be here. You don't get here on by accident. You know what I mean? You got to, you, there's a lot of hard work and dedication and sacrifice and, and there's a lot of lumps you got to take just to get your opportunity at the show. Um, and Andre, you all someone that is, as as one and has been successful in the UFC. So, um, no, I'm definitely not taking this guy lightly. I expect, you know, him to be the absolute best version of himself, yeah. uh, on Saturday night. Um, but with that being said, you know, I've worked tirelessly, you know, for years and years and years to be the best, not, not second place, not, not third place. Like my goal is to be the absolute best in the world. Um, you know, so do I look at anyone like they're uh, uh, above me or that they're a better fighter or that they're competitive with me. No, I don't. I don't think that there's a guy on the planet that can beat me besides me. Um, and my, uh, my work ethic, uh, reflects that, you know, I, I don't, I don't cut corners. I, I do everything that I need to do in preparation for, for a fight. I mean, I've had fights in on short notice that you could say that I wasn't prepared for, but, um, that's the sport. You know what I mean? If you give me two months to get ready for a fight, it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, I am going to be in shape. I'm going to be the sharpest, you know, athlete I can absolutely be. And, uh, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is a, been a, like a four month training camp for me. So, you know, I'm just chomping at the bit at this point just to get in there. You know, I've been, 
this is uh, this reminds me a lot of uh, last year. You know, mm-hmm. when a fight got canceled, and I, I did a full hard ten week training camp, fight gets canceled, then I'm fighting again in a month. So I keep my you know foot on the pedal, and then oh no, that that gets postponed, and then I'm and then my opponent gets hurt, and now I'm fighting someone else, and now I've been in fight camp for four and a half months. Uh, and you know, at that point, I'm just chomping at the bit. I can't wait to get in there and 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 fight. Um, you know, because I'm I'm over I'm over training. I don't even I don't even I don't even want to train anymore. I've done so much, you know. But I I just like the last two weeks, you know. It's there's there's a uh, there's obviously there's nerves. You're you're anxious, but you know, for me, it's mainly just right now. I just got to stay calm and be patient. Um, cause my opportunity is going to come. Absolutely. And, uh, I'm definitely going to make the most of it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cody. I really appreciate it. We've got about eight or 10 more minutes with you. I want to throw some rapid fire questions at you if you don't mind. Cause we have a lot of people that have questions for you and then myself also. And so, uh, let me, let me give you some multiple uh, questions here. First one, uh, someone asked, which I think is an interesting question. And his question was, and it was from the big fish our one of our fans and friends here. How often do you train? And before you answer that, that is really an interesting interesting question because I don't know if you want to share that or if it's a secret or whatever, but I think oh, no. a lot of people don't know. Are you guys training seven days a week or six? Do you do two training sessions a day or one? Could you fill us in a little bit on the training of Cody, the Spartan Stamen, uh, when you're in a training camp, how often, how many times a day, maybe how many hours, how many days a week? So, uh, you know, there's definitely a, a threshold right there's so only your body can only take so much right yeah, yep. and you, you got to you have to find that place and it takes years and years and years of, of you know trial and error to figure out exactly how much you can take you know before things start breaking before you start getting hurt before you your your performances start uh declining and that for for a long time you know i would just put my foot on the gas all the way until the fight um, but I've learned, you know, smarter, better ways, you know, thanks to the PI, thanks to, you know, people that have come before me that are smarter and that have made the mistakes that I've made. Uh, you know, I figured out about what my number is about how many times I can train in a week, um, for that app to be the, the, the optimal athlete that I can be. And it's, it's somewhere between 12 and 15, uh, times a week and it, and it varies. And, you know, sometimes I take a day off a week, uh, you know, if I'm feeling good, uh, sometimes I take two days off and maybe, maybe I'm feeling worn out. Maybe Friday comes around and I do my last hard session on Friday and I'm just beat. I mean, and it, like, it's not, I mean, it's not like, uh, something you can push through. You know what I mean? You gotta, yeah, there's a, there's a time you gotta listen to your body and be like, listen, dude, you're like getting tired walking up a set of stairs. Like you're not getting in better shape at this point. You're just beating yourself up. Right. Um, so you gotta, you got to know when to, to let off the pedal, but I would say, you know, on average, uh, 15 times, I would say a week. Um, some of those practices are hard. Some of them are really hard. Some of them are, uh, you know, what I would call a recovery practice or more like a drill session. Um, and you gotta, it, it all, it always varies, right? I mean, literally it's normally only one really high intensity workout a day. Okay. Um, that just kind of taps my energy systems. And then, you know, the rest of the day I'm kind of garbage. Okay. Really, I don't have the energy to do much. Um, so it normally consists of one practice a day that's going to be crazy hard. And then two practices, one of them might be like, a, a strength conditioning where I'm doing, you know, rehab type exercises and doing strength stuff, you know, to get stronger, to, you know, make sure injury prevention type stuff. And then another one might be a hour and a half drill session. So I mean, I mean it's, a, it's a lot and it, and it does vary, uh, day to day. Um, but I've, I've got it kind of down to a system at this point. And, uh, I, I, I know, uh, I know about where my body will be and when, and when I need to start pulling off and tapering, you know, for the fight so that I can peak. Cause I want to, I want my body to recover before I step into the cage. I want to be fully recovered. You know, I just did, you know, four months of tireless hard work and I, I want that my body and my muscles and everything in my mind needs, it needs to fully recover so that when I go into the, the cage, you know, I'm, uh, I'm 100% or as close as I can be. 
absolutely recovery is so much what it's about and i think uh only in the last maybe 30 years have athletes really known about that from what i remember and what i read in the 1970s and 60s and 50s all guys could think about is whoever trained more hours more days a week you know more day you know was winning and then guys were just beating themselves down so it is really important in the last few minutes we have you uh cody um let me ask you this my thought is and obviously you have your game plan but i always like to share my thoughts because i've been a martial artist for many years and trained and i've been a fight fan for so many years i can see uh his trainers telling him that the biggest chances he's gonna have is if he can catch you with the knee up the middle or if he can catch you in some sort of super slick damian maya submission uh off his back when you take him down and I have a feeling you, your camp has got you really prepared uh, for that. And, and that's probably not so, a surprising uh, information, is it? Yeah, I mean, if I'm Andre Ewell and, and I'm fighting me, I'm, I'm, definitely, uh, I'm definitely thinking that, like, I, I got I to gotta catch this guy. I have to, you know, I got to do something. Um, I got to put his lights out, you know, because... Ultimately, you know, if I think if he's being honest with himself, he's not going to be able to keep up with my with my wrestling, and he's he's not going to be able to keep up with my pace. You know, I've been training for four months. He's had a month to prepare for this fight, yeah. and maybe he's in great shape. You know what I mean? And honestly, I hope he is. I hope he's the best version of himself that he can be. Yeah. Um, because I want I want a legit competitor in there. I want to fight somebody that's that's really game, uh, and I want him to bring his best. Um, I mean, as far as like the knee or the submission go, I mean that would be. Uh, anybody's game plan against anyone, you know, like, yeah, obviously if, if you, if, if there's, if you're fighting a wrestler, oh yeah, you want to, you want to snatch a submission up on the way down or, you know, you want to catch him on the way in, but that is a hard, hard thing to do. Yeah. Uh, in this game, especially, you know, uh, with some, with somebody that, that, uh, you know what I mean? Like as, as much as he knows about me, I know about him and I know how he, you know, how he, how he prepares. I know what he throws. I know when he throws. Um, he's been pretty consistent in all of his fights. I mean, he does the same things yep. over and over and over again. I see a, a solid pattern. I mean, I read the, I read him like a like a kid's book. I know exactly what the guy's going to do, what he's going to bring. Yep. I mean, maybe you can surprise me with something uh, slick, but uh, I'll be ready for it. Yeah, I think so too, my friend. Well, I want to make sure people know, and I think I'm right on this February 6th, or is it the 13th? I think it's 6th, right? The 6th, the 6th. Yep, yep. February 6th, and that will be in Las Vegas, right? Yes, sir. Excellent. And that's where you train. And uh, this is going to be an amazing fight. I'm glad to hear that your wrestling is at the best and your conditioning is at the best. I can imagine uh, that it would be there when you train for a guy like Marab. And you got Andre Yule. Yeah, I look forward to you, uh, you know, uh, rolling over him and uh you know and showing some uh, some great fighting skill that you always show representing michigan uh cody stamen i really appreciate you coming on brother can't wait to see you uh lock up the victory in an impressive fashion and uh, hopefully get uh some bonus money for your hard work yeah that's what we're aiming for you know it's one thing to go out there and take the guy down everybody knows i can do that but it's another thing to go out there and knock him out you know knock off the striker and that's uh that's also something that you know that's something i i want bad you know i want that really bad Absolutely. um maybe maybe like i want to win i want to win be a knockout more than anything else so i'm gonna i'm gonna be swinging for the fences for sure absolutely i like it i look forward to it man really appreciate you taking the time to come on and visit with us and chat cody the spartan stamen go do what you do man can't wait to see you pull off the w in impressive fashion thank you for watching the hannibal tv Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.